Schultz from Alma, Kansas, and I'd like to tell my history of International Harvester and my association with the company. Uh, today I'm a collector, but as a young man, I uh, we farmed with uh, farm all tractors, H's and M's, and most all of our neighbors had farm all tractors too, and so. The first tractor that I drove was an H farm hole with a number eight little genius plow, two bottom plow behind it. And I remember that very well. And so I've always had a fondness for that. And then uh, the other thing that I remember very well was I'm actually from Alma, Kansas, but up the road a small town Alta Vista is where they had the International Harvester dealership. And I remember the first person that owned that was a by the name of Elmer Swenson and he owned that when I was a young man and then later on when I was in high school he sold it to a, uh, a man by the name of Ken McDiffin and the name of the dealership was High View Equipment and the name uh, has to do with Alta Vista which means High View it's on a high view so anyway on Saturday night we worked all week with the farm malls and I enjoyed farming and the livestock. We mostly lived in the Flint Hills, which is mostly livestock more than farming, but we had to put up hay and, and feed for the livestock. And I remember going to town on Saturday night after a week's work, and we always ended up at the International Harvester dealership. And so following my dad around and, and uh, seeing everything uh, that had to do with IH was probably the best memories I had, and particularly, one of the highlights was Ben's my first tractor I drove was an H when they came out with the Super H. I certainly had to see the Super H and we went to town on Saturday night and there set the new Super H. And I specifically remember the improvements they made. First of all, the fourth gear was too slow in an H and they had a fast fourth gear in the Super H. And that would really be helpful. Plus the increase in power was very, uh, very helpful too and this may sound like a small item but the uh, Super H also had disc brakes on it which was new to International and it had a rolling drawbar which was just a little roller on there that helped save the drawbar from wear and so that was some of my early memories uh, but then getting back to today I collect International tractors and uh, two of the tractors I've always been interested in is the 340 Utility, which you see sitting here, which I own, and I also have a, a two bottom plow, fast hitch plow with it too. And the other one was a 460 Farm All. The reason I have affinity to those, the 460, first of all, my dad never would buy me a new tractor, and I always wanted a new tractor to farm with. And, uh, we did have a 350 utility that was used and I did a lot of plowing with that and like that. But uh, my uncle had two or three new tractors and one of the new tractors he bought was a 460 Farmall. And I'll never forget the first time I drove that with the smooth running six cylinder and faster gears in it. And what a neat tractor that was. So I always wanted a new 460. Well, 55 years later, I got my new 460. <laughs> I bought a used 460 at a farm sale and I restored it myself and I've since sold that tractor and the reason I sold it I was still using it and had a loader on it and if you drove it down a gravel road I had a body shop paint job and you chip the paint so I thought I better not have something like that till I'm done farming because I couldn't uh, afford to chip the paint on it. So that was the story of the 460 and after I sold it I bought another one. So I now have another, I still have a 460 with a loader on it and I use it on the farm yet today. The 340 is a total, totally unique story. Um, we had a church youth group when I was in high school called the Walter League and once a year we'd have a hay rack ride. And when I was about probably a junior in high school, I was responsible for getting the tractor and wagon together. So I went to the international dealership and asked him if I could have a new tractor to drive on the hay rack ride. 
and he gave me a 340 utility. And ever since that time, I wanted a 340 utility because I thought that was a really neat tractor. So in my farming career, uh, I did have a Farmall 340 that I farmed with, and it wasn't quite big enough, and I traded it for a 756 diesel, which was really a nice tractor too. And uh, so then one day I thought I need to find me a 340 utility because I got to have one. And I put an ad in the Red Power magazine and I got two calls. And of course I'm from Kansas. Both calls were in Minnesota. And one guy said, well, his was a little rough. And the other one said his was pretty good. And I said, well, send me a picture of it. And he sent me a picture of this tractor and it looked pretty good. And so we made a deal over the phone and and uh, my grandson, who's now 14, I've gotten him interested in the antique tractor, the classics. And I said, we're gonna have to go to Minnesota. And this was in December. And all I had to haul it in was a stock trailer for hauling livestock, which is only so wide and has no variance. So I called the guy and I said, you're gonna have to measure your tractor and it can't be over so many inches wide. And I made him go out and measure twice because I said, when I get there and it don't fit, I'm done. So he did, and uh, of course he had the wheels set in there on the 340. So we left in December, and I think I drove 19 hours. We were trying to beat a, a wind storm or a snowstorm in Minnesota that was coming, and up there they'll shut the roads down, and you can't get out. So we went up there, and the tractor was fine, and we loaded up. It fit in my trailer, and, and we headed home. And so. That was kind of the story on the 340, and my grandson uh, drives it in the parades, and I basically bought it for him uh, because it's a small tractor and because we can haul it. So that's kind of the story of my experience with IH. I also have two Cub Cadets that I've restored. One is here at the show. It's a, uh, a 1282 Hydro, and I have a number two Cub Cadet wagon behind it. I've restored both of them. And I actually had an offer to sell the 1282 while I'm here. And I also, at home, I didn't bring it, but I have a 1961 original, and I have a Brindley plow for it, and it's restored. So, I'm in love with IHN.